He rides a Harley and plays a mean guitar, which makes what he does even more interesting. Here's our Power Player of the Week. NIH probably has a bigger effect on your daily life than almost any other government agency. Dr. Francis Collins is director of the National Institutes of Health, the biggest supporter of biomedical research in the world. On a campus outside Washington, 17,000 scientists work in 27 different institutes, coming up with breakthrough cures and treatments for disease. We are the house of hope. This is where people come to when everything else has sort of stopped working. Collins is talking about the NIH Clinical Center, the world's largest research hospital. Now, at least for some patients, we have a Lazarus opportunity for people who are in terrible shape to be able to recover. What is a Lazarus opportunity? They get into a clinical trial to try a brand new therapeutic that is still very much under study and they have this dramatic response and they go home and go back to work. And all that is the tip of the iceberg for NIH, which gives out 90 percent of its funds and research grants to outside programs. Which brings us to money. The NIH budget this year is 31 billion dollars which, after spending cuts and sequestration, is where NIH was 12 years ago. What does that mean for research grants? Traditionally, we could fund about a third of those. Now we're down to funding about a sixth of those. And so that means about half of the science is left on the table at a time of such great promise. Collins knows about scientific breakthroughs. He led the Human Genome Project that in 2003 announced it had mapped the full sequence of human DNA. Inside each cell of your body is this instruction book made up of three billion letters of the DNA code. If you know the reference genome for that person and you look at their cancer, you can see what happened. Oh, that T should have been a C. And now that gene is overactive. There's a moan that is heard along the shore. Francis Collins is not your typical scientist. He plays a guitar adorned with a DNA helix. He rides Harleys, and he's written a book about his belief in God. How controversial was that in the scientific community? It stirred things up a bit. There's some questions science is poorly designed to deal with, like why are we here? That's where, for me, faith comes in, and understanding that science limits the questions that you can ask, so let's find another way. While he's asking those questions, he'll keep working in the most powerful job in American science. I'm a physician. I got into medicine hoping that I could help people. We have 7,000 diseases for which we know the molecular cause. We only have treatments for 500 of them. And to be able to stand at the helm of this amazing place and steer that forward is a dream come true.